Q106.7 weather. Here's your KQNK forecast. Slight chance for storms today, otherwise sunshine mixed with clouds at times. Daytime highs approaching 78. Winds out of the north, 8 to 15 miles per hour. Clear skies tonight, lows of a loft around 54. Sunshine mixed with clouds at times. Tomorrow, high of 77. Lots of sunshine Saturday with a high of 82. 85 Sunday. From the Weatherology Weather Center, I'm staff meteorologist Laura Lockwood. Right now, 59. Kansas Information Network News, I'm Jared Sorello. A man killed in a double shooting in Kansas City is identified. Brandon Dixon reports. Police say 18-year-old Tondre Turner was one of two men injured in the shooting Tuesday on Dittman Way. Investigators say Turner and another unidentified man who knew each other began arguing at a residence before both pulled out weapons and shot each other. Turner died while the second victim was treated for minor injuries. I'm Britton Dixon. A city of Wellington worker has died tragically after being electrocuted on the job. At this point, the man's name is not publicly released. But the city says the man was a Wellington City electric distribution lineman who came into contact with an energized piece of equipment on Wednesday. The lineman was reportedly part of a crew working on wildlife guarding equipment at the city's power plant. Two other linemen were not injured. Kansas Information Network News. Healthcare.gov is here for you when life happens. If you lost your health coverage because of turning 26, going off Medicaid, leaving your job, or moving, you could be eligible to enroll in new coverage now. And if you need to update your coverage because of marriage or having a baby, you could also be eligible. But don't wait. There's a limited time to enroll. Check your eligibility at healthcare.gov today. Life happens. Get covered. Paid for by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Smokey the Bear Then you know why Smokey tells you when he sees you passing through Remember, please be careful, it's the least that you can do <laughs> what you desire, don't play with matches, don't play with fire After 80 years of learning his wildfire prevention tips, Smokey Bear lives within us all. Learn more at SmokeyBear.com and remember, only you can prevent wildfires. Brought to you by the USDA Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Good morning, I'm Natalie Hadley with your KQNK News. Brought to you by Firebolt Ag, LLC, serving all of your chemical and fertilizer needs. On Tuesday, Governor Kelly announced that the August 2024 total tax collections were $665.6 million, which was up 4% from a year ago, and $22.8 million, or 3.5%, more than the estimate. Individual income tax collections were up 10.1% from last August and were $329.4 million, which is $19.4 million, or 6.3% more than the estimate, and corporate income tax collections were $20.2 million, $9.8 million, or 32.8% less than the estimate, and down 19.7% from August 2023. Governor Kelly stated that while they are seeing collections higher than the estimate, they likely won't see the impact of the income tax cuts from Senate Bill 1 on monthly collections until the beginning of next year. She added that because of that timing, they must continue to be fiscally responsible for Kansas's long-term outlook. Combined retail sales and compensating use tax receipts were $294.6 million, which is 4.5%, or $12.6 million more than the estimate, and up $2.2 million, or 0.7%, from last year. The state treasurer for Kansas said the bipartisan settlement of multi-state litigation against Delaware regarding unclaimed property from a money transfer company would result in $1.5 million being forwarded to Kansas for distribution to consumers. Stephen Johnson, the Kansas state treasurer, said the settlement will ease the ability for Kansans to locate over $1.5 million in missing money grant funds improperly held by the state of Delaware and these funds will eventually be part of statewide outreach efforts to reunite unclaimed property funds with the rightful owners. He said Kansas would assume responsibility for outreach necessary to return $1.55 million to those making a justified claim for the property. People can search under a name or business at treasurer.ks.gov. Other states taking part in the settlement were Colorado, Nebraska, Oklahoma, Iowa, and Arkansas. 
the Kansas Highway Patrol has released its Labor Day weekend holiday activity report, and the reporting period for the holiday ran from 6 p.m. on Friday, August 30th to 11.59 p.m. on Monday, September 2nd. The Kansas Highway Patrol worked one fatal non-DUI-related crash involving one non-DUI-related fatality over the holiday, and across Kansas, there were 12 DUI arrests, down four from 2023, 598 speed citations, down 89 from 2023, 62 safety belt citations, up four from 2023, two safety belt citations for teens, down five from 2023, nine child restraint citations, down six from 2023, and 575 motorist assist calls, down 197 from 2023. As of 6.30 p.m. on Wednesday, the Kansas Department of Transportation reopened eastbound I-70 at exit 95 near Greenfield, and all lanes of I-70 that were previously closed are now open. The interstate was closed earlier in the day for the demolition and removal of the 150th Avenue Bridge over I-70, located near mile marker 117 in Trigo County, and with the westbound lanes reopened just after 4 p.m. For the latest information on road closures, conditions, construction, and detours, you can visit candrive.gov or call 511 in Kansas. In Nebraska news, 37-year-old Mitchell Feeman and 29-year-old Madison D. Koning have been each charged with felony insurance fraud and theft after being accused of defrauding GEICO of almost $80,000. Feeman of Adams appeared in Lancaster County Court on Wednesday, where a judge set his bond at $10,000. Court documents allege that in July 2022, Feeman and D. Koning were dating at the time, reported that their camper was stolen, and filed a claim with GEICO. They submitted a list of $15,000 worth of items that they claimed were in the camper when it was stolen. However, a year later, the Nebraska Department of Insurance received a tip that the trailer wasn't actually stolen. After an investigation, law enforcement found the camper on a property in Oklahoma, and an arrest affidavit said Thiemann and De Koning gave the camper to the property owner to settle a debt. Geico paid out $78,750.54 for the claim, and it was reported that the couple split the money. De Koning of Cortland has posted $5,000 bail to be released from jail, and her first court appearance is set for Thursday. Thiemann is, set back, is due back in court on October 3rd. 32-year-old Alicia Martinez of Kearney pled no contest to second-degree assault, and Buffalo County District Court Judge Ryan Carson sentenced her to 8 to 15 years in prison on Tuesday morning after she was accused of shooting a police officer in the leg while in the hospital. Prosecutors and court officials said she was in the hospital because of methamphetamine use in February, and a police news release said that while in the hospital, she grabbed an officer's gun and shot the officer in the leg while the gun remained in the holster. During the hearing, the defense defense attorney asked for the low number of the sentence to be as small as possible because Martinez doesn't have a history of violent crime. The state's attorney said Martinez is lucky that others didn't get injured in the incident. She said the video of the hospital interaction made it obvious that Martinez intended to take the weapon and then shoot the officer. The state recommended a maximum sentence of 15 years because the victimized officer believes Martinez should have a chance to better herself later in life. Martinez will receive credit for 211 days already served, and if she earns good time, she'll be eligible for parole after three years and five months. Judge Carson said he designed the sentence so that she could be on parole for four years, which he believes would help Martinez to overcome her addiction issues. I'll be back with more in just a moment. Firebolt Ag is a full-service fertilizer and chemical retailer. They customize products for individual farmers' needs, with the primary focus being customer profitability. Let Josh and Jack help you get the most out of your farm ground. They also provide in-house marketing with Ron Wall of Flatwater Solutions. Visit Ron in Phillipsburg or call Josh at 785-854-8484 or Jack at 308-840-2819. Firebolt Ag, your leader in agriculture. Your menu today for Eisenhower Elementary School. For lunch, you'll be having macaroni and cheese, little smokies, cooked carrots, rosy applesauce, pepper strips, french bread, and milk. For Norton Community High School and Junior High, your lunch today will be pigs in a blanket or funnel cake with sausage, fruit, and milk. And for Northern Valley Schools, your lunch today will be ham and cheese pockets, potatoes, vegetable, and fruit. 
Now we'll hear from Fig Millen and Norton Blue Jay cross country coach George Rossi to update on the team and their meet today in Goodland. I'm here with head cross country coach George Rossi. Coach, last year you're coming off a, a third place finish at the state for the girls and uh, a couple state medals too, and then the boys performed pretty well uh, throughout the season. But let's uh, start off with this new year here, and we'll start with the girls. How big is your squad this year? Well, our squad is is small again. You know, last year we had six six girls. This year we have seven. Um, we have three girls back from last year's team. We have Emma Collins, who is our our number one runner and Savannah Runback, which she was our number three and four runner last year and Lorelai Granberry returns and she was usually our five runner last year. So we do bring back uh, quite a bit of experience as far as uh, those girls, you know, they were league champions and they won the regional and they got third at state. So those girls have ran a lot of races. Um, we added some pretty good kids this year, I think, on the girls' side. Um, Cassie McLean's a sophomore. She's out for cross country. She's looking she's looking good. Um, Kaysen Miller is a freshman. Um, you know, I think Kaysen will be one of those kids when, after she gets everything figured out, is going to be, uh, she's going to be really good. She's kind of been nursing a sore ankle, but uh, we're going to work on that. And she has a lot of potential. Um, Danica Frick is also a freshman and Natalie Simmons is our senior uh, last year Natalie's been out for all four years and she's been on the varsity team as well and and she was our sixth girl last year in, in the state team so we, we do bring back a lot of experience and, and some of the new kids that we have on the girls side are, are looking to really make an impact. Now on the boys side uh, you have uh, three uh, five boys that are returning and of course uh, one of them uh, is uh, if you're that would switch to football, but uh, still a pretty good course this year. Yeah, we bring a bring up a lot of our kids um, from last year's team. You know, they finished fourth at regionals, and um, Aston Katz is our number one runner coming back. He's Aston's looked really good this so far this year. Tyler Stewart is a senior. Um, Tyler's put in a lot of miles this summer. And look, it looks good. We also bring back Jace Bailey, who's a sophomore. Um, I think Jace has got, you know, when the boys. Boys tend to get a lot stronger. Jace is already in his time trial the other night. Um, was very close to his PR, so I think he's gonna. I think he's gonna do really good things this year. We also bring back a senior in Brexton Eisenhagen, who was who was on our team last year. Um, you know, Brexton looks once he gets into shape. I think his times will start coming down. Michael Urban's a sophomore. Then Michael Urban's improved a lot. Yeah, I think last year during track season, he improved during track, and it's kind of carried over. And then bring some new guys in. Uh, Max Carter, Elvis Green, and Noah Lanier are all freshmen, and I think um, you know I think they're going to make an impact. Max is looking good. He was a very good miler in in the junior high, and Elvis was a good distance runner. He ran the two mile and the mile in junior high, and so. Once those guys kind of get their feet wet in the cross-country races, I think they're going to make an impact. And Noah, Noah Lanier is improving every day as a freshman, so I think you know he's going to be fighting for a varsity spot very soon. Coach, uh, a lot of activities happened during the summer, and of course uh, uh, some of the kids uh, was able to uh, stay in shape throughout the summer. But what are some of your practices looking like uh, right now? Uh, the weather has been fairly cooperative with you. and uh, Are you running hills? Are you running flats or, or sprints? Well, we try to we try to get a hill work in every day because our our meets that we're going to go to, especially the first two, we go to Goodland um, tomorrow, which is a very hilly course, and then we turn right back around and go to one of the harder courses in the state at Wamigo. So we've been be, been running hills. Um, you know, the first couple of weeks of practice are difficult because some of our kids are in real good shape and some of our kids are not in good shape at all. So you kind of have to find that happy median, I guess. Where you're, where you're still working your kids that are in good shape, but we don't want to, we don't want to injure the kids that are not in good shape. And I told them, I said, you know, we're not going to be in good shape for our first meet, but we need to be in, we need to peak at the end of the season. And and, you know, for the most part, that seems to be holding fairly true for us. So we're taking, we're taking a, we're working hard, but we also got to watch these kids and make sure that we don't run into some repetitive injuries and things like that and end up we don't we don't have room for any injuries if somebody gets hurt on our team we're going to be in big trouble so we're, we're trying to bring them along slow and hopefully it'll work out for us 
That brings us to your meet, and like you mentioned, uh, Goodland, and uh, you've you ran there the last couple uh, years. Uh, it kind of sets your tone for the for the year. Why don't you name some of the teams that's going to be there, who to look out for, and um, maybe the format that's going to be run at Goodland. Uh, yeah, that's going to be a good. I think it's going to be a good race. There's a lot of three A schools from Western Kansas that we'll see. Um, of course, Goodland will be there, and, and they've got some. Um, they had some runners really come along at the end of the year last year. I think Holcomb, both the boys and the girls, uh, I think the boys team will probably be the number one ranked team in 3A this year. Um, they are amazing. Uh, their kids are blazing fast. Uh, Cimarron will be there. The girls, uh, Janae Fugit is, was third place at state last year in front of Emma. Um, Colby's got some very solid runners on, on both the boys and the girls' side. Uh, Scott City, uh, Scott City qualified both teams last year in 4A, and they bring a lot of kids back, especially on the girls' side. So, I think it's going to be a very competitive race. Um, you know, it's it, we want to see where we're at. We don't know. We don't have any idea of what kind of shape we're in or how. I just told the kids the, the other night at practice. I what I'm looking for is just seeing how we go out and compete. If we can, if we can compete, the the conditioning will come as as the season goes. Well, Coach, we're going to wish you the best luck for the season. Of course, then uh, Thursday you'll be traveling out to Goodland uh, for that invitational. So reporting for KQNK, I'm Fig Millen. Thank you, Fig and Coach Rossi. And good luck to the Blue Jay cross-country team today for their first meet in Goodland. Graveside services for Ramona Barnes, 70 of Norcater, will be held at 11.30 a.m. today, Thursday, September 5th, in the Norcater Cemetery, and a visitation will be from 10 to 11 a.m. before the graveside service at the Plummer Gobber Funeral Home. Memorial contributions may be made to the Ramona Barnes Memorial Fund and sent in care of Plummer Gobber Funeral Home, 215 West Main Street in Norton, and condolences may be left at plummergobber.com. Mass of Christian Burial for Marilyn Dix, 68 of Norton, will be held at 10.30 a.m. on Saturday, September 7th at the St. Francis of Assisi Catholic Church in Norton and interment will follow in the Norton Cemetery. Visitation will be from 5 to 7 p.m. tomorrow, Friday, September 6th at the Plummer Gobber Funeral Home and a rosary and wake service will follow at 7 p.m. also at the funeral home. Memorial contributions may be made to the Maryland Dix Memorial Fund and sent in care of Plummer Gobber Funeral Home, 215 West Main Street in Norton, and condolences may be left at plummergobber.com. I'm Natalie Hadley. Your KQNK News was brought to you by Firebolt Ag, LLC, Farmers Helping Farmers to Succeed. You can contact Firebolt Ag today to get the most out of your farmland. Your KQNK weather forecast is being brought to you by Hinkle Termite and Pest Control, your Norton experts for all of your pest control needs. Your forecast for today, there's a 20% chance of showers and thunderstorms after noon. Otherwise, it'll be mostly sunny with a high near 78 and a north wind of 10 to 15 miles per hour. For tonight, it should be mostly clear with a low around 54 and a north wind of 5 to 10 miles per hour, which should become light and variable. On Friday, it should be mostly sunny with a high near 77. And on Friday night, partly cloudy with a low around 55. I'll be back with the rest of your forecast in just a moment. When you've got bugs, we know what a nuisance that can be. Lock them out. From Hinkle Termite and Pest Control, Lock Em Out is our very effective residential insect prevention program. We'll come to your place and treat your foundation plus all insect entryways. And while we're there, receive a free termite inspection. Call Mr. Rich Wenzel, our certified technician in Norton, at 785-202-0167. That's 202-0167. Continuing with your weather forecast, on Saturday it should be sunny with a high near 82. On Sunday, sunny with a high near 88. On Monday, sunny with a high near 92. On Tuesday, sunny with a high near 93. And on Wednesday, should be sunny with a high near 90. Currently, with fair skies, it is 61 degrees. The humidity is 83%. The wind speed is north at 9 miles per hour. The barometric pressure is 30.28, and the dew point is 55 degrees. 
your weather was brought to you by Hinkle Termite and Pest Control right here in Norton. You can call Hinkle Termite and Pest Control at 785-202-0167 for all of your pest control needs. It is 823 and time for Kansas Sports. Brought to you by United Northwest Federal Credit Union, where everything they do, they do for you. Save more, earn more with the Easy Saver account at the United Northwest Federal Credit Union. Enrollment in this program automatically rounds up the amount of all debit card and share draft purchases made from your checking account to the next whole dollar and deposits into the Easy Saver savings account. Not only will this account help you save, but it also earns 2.01% APY monthly. Special terms and conditions apply. Come in today and open your Easy Saver account at the United Northwest Federal Credit Union, where everything we do, we do for you. NCUA insured. KIN Sports, I'm Spencer Dupuy, Michael Swain of Fog.net and 24-7 Sports joined 580 WIBW in Topeka on Tuesday and discussed what Kansas can take away from their week one win on the gridiron. The biggest thing you got to look at is what did the players look like running around there because you can't compare, hey, how did this guy do physically in the trenches because it's just a totally different ball game. And I think what you can look at is, okay, speed and confidence. Someone like Cornell Wheeler is a great example. He showed speed and confidence fitting gap and that's exactly what you need at that linebacker position. Melo Dotson, speed and confidence breaking on that ball to have that pick six. Can't can't read into, I guess, the physical levels of some of these guys because it's, it's different. And so you have to look at something like that. And I think for KU, they showed a lot in that regard. And I think that is a very encouraging thing. The fact that, again, like, you know, like I said at the top, like KU looked like a Big 12 title contender should against a bad FCS team. I think that's kind of where the analysis to some degree outside of like uh, the way people are used and some of the scheme things. I think that's kind of where it has to stop. I think we'll learn a lot more this week. KU travels to take on Illinois Saturday at 6 p.m. You can watch that game on FS1, Kansas Information Network Sports. I'm Spencer Dupuy. Ranchers, have you considered adding a calf table to your cattle working equipment? The Powder River Classic Calf Table has great features for ease of operation and efficient calf processing. This calf table accommodates calves up to 450 pounds and features a reversible head gate for opposite side branding, optional left or right side tilt, three level tilt down options, and a balanced easy tilt system. Boost the health and performance of your herd. Shop trusted vaccines, dewormers, implants, and more at valleyvet.com. There you'll find exceptional value and a large selection of meds and more. Shipped fast and free on most orders over $75. Find your ranching needs at valleyvet.com or shop their store in Marysville. Valleyvet.com, valleyvet.com, Valleyvet Supply. It's true, many of us spend more time thinking about what's for dinner than preparing for retirement. But if you think your retirement needs deserve more attention, I agree, and I'd like to help. I'm Edward Jones Financial Advisor, Philip Eisenhagen. Together, we can give your long-term retirement strategy the attention it deserves. Stop by our office at 418 East Holm here in Norton, or call 877-3373. Edward Jones, Making Sense of Investing, member SIPC. 